Here's a challenge. Allow your imagination to run away and think of the most extreme things possible. I am asking you to do this, looking into the future. What are the most advanced and craziest places technology will take us? If you're having difficulty starting, imagine the most futuristic movie you have seen. Start there, then ask yourself, in every way, how could life be far more progressive? Whatever you can imagine, whatever you have seen, most experts in computer science and technology believe during this century we will reach levels significantly beyond that. We are talking about the possibility of intelligence being the number most of us do not even know the name of. Times what intelligence is right now. A number far greater than, say, a quadrillion times where it is right now. In this episode, I will look at why. I'm not an expert on today's technology, but I did run a technology company for about 10 years. My fascination with what things can be extends back well before that. I have not kept up with things as much over these last few years as I did when I had my company. This will be an ongoing series on AI. To me, this is the most interesting thing happening right now. As to where AI can go might be the most interesting concept in history. The concept of intelligent machines is not a new one. Even back in antiquity, a couple thousand years ago or more, this was written about in the Middle East, Rome, Greece, China, and India. They imagined machines that could perform without being told what to do. Most of the world's literature has been lost, so there's no way to know how extensive this was in storytelling or writing. Ever since film first started, it also explored this. Simple machines were created a few thousand years ago, and most advanced civilizations were using them a couple of thousand years ago. Archimedes, Hypatia, and others in the city-state of Alexandria long ago developed many more advanced machines. This included the Antikythera mechanism, which could predict eclipses, positions of the sun, moon, and planets. It could tell time and calendar cycles. This is often thought to be the first analog computer. Lord Byron, born 1788, is one of the most famous poets in the English language. He also had an impressive daughter, Ada Lovelace. She figured out that a machine could be trained by writing code for it, and was then the first computer programmer that we know of. By 1843, she had created algorithms to be carried out by a computer. Computer memory seems to have been discovered in the early 1940s, but it was not reliable until 1949. British computer scientist Alan Turing, father of AI, in 1950 wrote about building intelligent machines and how to test them in the mid-1950s. He also came up with a method for measuring a computer's intelligence, now famously known as the Turing test. Another interest of mine, and this takes me back 50 years, my father would bring me to his work. He was a computer and radar specialist for the federal government. He maintained the computers and radar equipment for airports. When he took me to his work, I would spend hours on these computers. They were very simple in what they could do, but I had a lot of fun with them. I would sit and imagine what they might do in the future. This interest in looking forward would be greatly enhanced by listening to Nobel Prize winner and economics and creator of AI, Herbert Simon speak. This was in the mid-1980s. That day, he spoke about his fascination, research, and interest in how individuals reach greatness. This was one of the biggest influences in my interest of potential, which then is a big reason why I started this channel. 
That day, he spoke. It was a small room, and I was able to talk to him afterwards. He had such enthusiasm for all that he spoke about. It was contagious. He also was very kind and appreciative of my interest in the subject as I talked to him. He was a nominee for other Nobel Prizes in completely different areas as the only person in history to do that. His areas of expertise extend from his PhD in political science to economics, computer science, mathematics, cognitive psychology, general social science, organizational science and business, econometrics, and other areas. He also played a large role in the Marshall Plan, which aided the recovery of Western Europe in the aftermath of World War II, a true polymath. Among many other positions, Simon was a consultant for the Rand Corporation from 1951 to 1976. I plan to do videos in the future on both Herbert Simon and Rand. Rand, which stands for Research and Development, is a think tank, research institution, consulting firm, and even offers graduate degrees. This was the first think tank to be referred to as a think tank. One day, Herbert Simon was walking through Rand and saw a printer printing. His thought was that if a computer could manipulate symbols, it could do other decision-making, and it could mimic human thought. He approached Alan Newell, who had written the program for the printer, and later Clifford Shaw. Sponsored by Rand Corporation in 1955, they began working on a program to solve the theorems used in the book Principia Mathematica, written by Alfred Whitehead and Bertrand Russell, published in 1910. The program was called Logic Theorist and proved 38 of the 52 theorems in Chapter 2 of Principia Mathematica. Some of the proofs were unknown in mathematics before the program presented them. It is considered the first artificial intelligence program. It was presented the next summer at the Dartmouth Summer Research Project on Artificial Intelligence. This is where the name artificial intelligence was coined. In 1965, Simon predicted that AI would be able to do anything humans could do. Computer scientist Minsky in 1970 told Life magazine it would be three to eight years before computers had the general intelligence of human beings. AI flourished from 1957 to 1974. Computational power was not what was needed for AI to continue growing into the late 1970s and 80s. 1974 to 80 and 87 to 93 are referred to as AI winters as finance and interest calmed down significantly. In 1997, reigning world chess champion and grandmaster Gary Kasparov was defeated by IBM's Deep Blue, a chess playing program. Gary was the youngest world champion chess player at the age of 22 in 1985 and was widely believed to be the greatest chess player of all time. There is something called Moore's Law, which came from George Moore of Intel Corporation. Intel is one of the first and longest lasting tech companies of Silicon Valley. George observed and predicted the number of components in a microchip would double every year. Microchips, also called integrated circuits, are the key component in virtually all modern electronics. This doubling has held up even until today. The first year of this was 1959. Since 1959, the capacity for transistors is several quintillion times greater. A quintillion has 18 digits, or the first number, followed by 18 zeros. I am hearing in the last couple of years that AI, or at least aspects of it, have been growing tenfold per year. Tenfold a year means that these rates 
it'll reach a billion times increase in eight years. I do believe the tenfold rate is inflated, but even if that is, it still may mean that it's going to be something like tens or hundreds of millions of times greater. Even if it takes nine, 10, or even 15 years to grow one billion fold, that means it'll be one billion times smarter, faster, and more capable. Nobody on the face of the earth can comprehend anything about technologies that have grown one billion times. The reason AI may grow much quicker is AI is making other AIs with the purpose of each generation being smarter and more capable. Many other advancements will increasingly contribute to AI's growth. There are something like 150 to 200 quantum computers in existence. A quantum computer operates exponentially faster than a standard computer, and I suppose the possibilities are limitless. Other technologies will emerge, allowing us to push the direction of unimaginable achievements. However, all the projections may be wrong. We don't know if technology can continue to advance as it's advancing. There may be some fundamental limitations that we don't yet understand. The only evidence we have that it'll continue is to look at how it has grown in the past and to look at things currently. However, it is extremely unlikely that we have maxed out our technological advancements or are anywhere close to it. The other likeliness is that new technologies will emerge that we cannot yet conceive of. Please come along as I explore the amazing world of emerging technology and how it will change our lives. This will be an ongoing exploration of this. Please like, subscribe, and let others know if you enjoyed the content. Thank you so much for visiting. Have a great day and see you in the next video.